Hey kids, it's the Biston Flyer here, hope you're well and uh, welcome to Great Missenden on this fine September day where you find me on what I'm calling a quick and dirty bike review Why is it quick and dirty? Well, it's because I've not been riding this bike for long This is a CB1000R which I've been lent just for the day because uh, my bike's in for a service so I've got this as a, as a kind of a courtesy bike but I'm really lucky because it's an absolutely brand spanking new bike no miles on it when I picked it up so I'm feeling pretty uh, pretty privileged to be riding it so stick around stay tuned I'll tell you what I think of it so when I say quick and dirty review uh, it is because I wasn't expecting to get this bike so I've done no research on it I know nothing about the bike I've not read any reviews I've not seen any reviews of this bike before I've not ridden it before I don't even know what the spec is and I don't even intend to talk you through the spec on this review so there's a departure from normal because at the end of the day What's important about bikes is how they make you feel, isn't it? It's not the numbers on the spec sheet. So this is a CB1000R, which is a sort of a naked roadster type bike. I think it looks absolutely cracking. So let me show you around this fine looking machine. I really think it is a nice looking bit of kit. Right, if we start this side then. Okay, what have we got here? So there's the overall bike. I think it looks absolutely lovely actually. I think they've done a lovely job with the shape of this tank, which is quite unusual, nice and sculptured. And I think it looks really, really nice. Got a big old radiator on the front as all liquid cooled machines do these days, of course, but they've done quite a nice job putting these little bits of trim on there that disguise it quite nicely. I like the way they do the markings on the engine as well. Big old Euro 5 exhaust on here. It doesn't look too terrible actually. Uh, twin pipes out the back look all right and it sounds all right as well so I don't think I would change that. Something that's quite interesting are these massive sort of um, bits that stop you, you know, you're going to grind down the exhaust I guess if you didn't have these so they're there to uh, stop you leaning too far so you know when you're leaning over too far but that's no, that's not going to be uh, come into play in my case I can tell you. The back end here looks nice, the, the rear wheel we've got this single sided swing arm which looks cracking and I love the detail on that wheel. This again, these machined bits of finish on here makes the bike look really premium. They've got a sort of a GS-esque uh, number plate hanger on the back. Not too sure about that, but it does mean that the back end here is quite neat. All LED lighting all round as well. Here we can see the single sided drive as well. Uh, nothing I think to say there. The stand is relatively short on here, but not a problem. It doesn't lean over too far front I think looks lovely again LED light at the front looks nice and modern and the LED lights for the indicators as well and this little sort of chin bit that uh, I guess just keeps that airflow nice and uh, nice and calm over you so yeah overall I think she's a really handsome bike oh and I've just seen what the size of the engine is on there look it says 998 cubic centimeters so 998 cc this that's the one bit of spec I'll give you on this review all right so welcome back aboard the CB1000R now in a departure from the norm, as I say, I'm not going to talk you through the spec on the machine because it's all about what bikes make you feel like, isn't it? So I'll tell you, you know, how the bike is to ride in different scenarios because I've had it from um, the dealers today, which was HGB motorcycle. So thanks to those guys for letting me borrow the bike. I have ridden this in town on the motorway and so on. So uh, I'll put some little clips in through the review of that as well. So I've got a bit of a feel for it. But let's start off with uh, the first thing you notice about any bike when you jump on, and that's the comfort. Well. Riding position on this is lovely. You know, I'm lent a little bit forward. There's no significant weight on my wrist though. Uh, and I'm nice and upright. The seat on it feels nice and comfy. I've been riding this for about an hour for the last hour and I've got no pain on my backside. I have no doubt that this bike would be absolutely fine for doing touring on or for longer rides. Riding the bike around town is absolutely fine. Fueling seems pretty good on it. Loved and smooth with this four-cylinder engine. Great for nipping in and out of traffic. Feels nice and light as well and agile. So we make a pretty good commuter, I reckon. Just taking it a little easy because I've got new tyres on here. On the motorway, as you'd expect, she's more than capable with this big 1,000cc engine. You've got bags of power to keep up with traffic, so no worries there, of course. And as far as wind blast is concerned, it is a naked bike, no fairing, nothing like that. Just this little tiny sort of chin thing. But the result of that is the airflow actually is very smooth on you, no buffeting at all. So actually if you do have to ride on motorways or dual carriageways on a regular basis, you'll have no problems on this. The airflow's nice and smooth, works a treat. The seating position, if I were to compare it with other bikes, I suppose it reminds me a little bit of maybe something like the Speed Twin. One thing I really do like on the uh, CB1000 are the controls. Now they're, they're quite uh, logically laid out. Now I haven't read a manual or anything like that, but it's dead easy to understand what they all, all do. 
and in particular I like the buttonage if that's a word this on the left here on this ha handlebar look instead of a joystick or any other sort of control or buttons to go through the menus and so on they've got this sort of vein thing look so it's easy to hit left and right and then if you want to go up and down you hit the top and bottom of them and it's through a gloved hand it's very easy to tell what you've done with that so I've always gone on about how I like the whiz wheel that BMWs have well that is definitely the way to go for Hondas that is a brilliant way of controlling stuff on the menu there I really like that it's like a vein that you can knock left and right and up and down and you definitely know when you've done it in gloved hands so big thumbs up for Honda for that control in particular I like that but uh, other than that all the controls relatively simple on here you can change modes on the fly with the mode button there we go look we just as usual just pull in the clutch and there's a user mode there's sport standard and there's a rain mode as well I had it in just now but standard seems absolutely fine and the other good news is it's one of those bikes where you can actually tell the difference between the modes rain definitely softened things down a bit and just now uh, when I was on a faster road I put it into sports and yeah the thing absolutely flies so the riding modes on this actually work all right so that's a, that's a good thing sometimes I can't tell the difference but on this bike thumbs up now again I've not uh, boned up on the specs on this bike so I can't tell you anything about the engine in terms of its specs but I can tell you it's a four-cylinder machine so it's lovely and smooth and it being a CB1000R it's around about a thousand cc what it has got it's absolutely loads of go now I want to be careful because it is a brand new bike so I don't want to go thrashing it because it needs running in of course but I've got it in the standard riding mode at the moment and there's absolutely loads of grunt on this thing while we were talking about instrumentation as well I, I particularly like the TFT on here I'm often critical of TFTs on bikes but this one I like what Honda have done because they've gone with the uh, analog displays on a TFT which I think just looks great uh, also I'm pleased to see that this bike does have a proper fuel gauge uh, which uh, for some reason some bikes don't seem to have Ducati are you listening but this one does have uh, we've only got one bar of fuel left so I'm going to go and get some petrol unfortunately the nearest fuel station is Tesco so sorry about that putting Tesco fuel in a new bike but hey ho needs must so let's go and see if there's any surprises fueling up right here we are at Tesco for a drop of hopper juice this uh, Let's see if there are any surprises here. I'm not expecting any. Right, I'm just going to squirt a little bit in here because I don't need to fill her up. Right, I'm glad to say that the bike isn't keyless, so uh, old school fuel tank. Easy enough. Right, let's squirt a couple of litres in. Feels, can't get the nozzle in very far. Look, there's a little thing that stops it going in, but that doesn't matter. That's just a by the by, an observation. Right, let's just squirt in, I don't know, five litres, say. Should get me through the day. There we go, five litres. No issue at all. So much easier than keyless, that game. No timing issues. Right, let's see how long it takes the bike to recognise that I've put some fuel in. Here goes the TFT. And it's already gone to over half full, look, so it's instantaneous, unlike some bikes I could mention. Triumph, are you listening? So as expected, absolutely no issues with fueling up. Right, onwards. Another practical point, the mirrors work really well on here. They're nice and big, don't vibrate. You can see behind you a treat. That's what you need mirrors to do. No worries with the mirrors. Right, let's do one of my lugging about tests, shall we? Let's see what the uh, bike feels like in terms of its weight to move around and also what the turning circle's like. So off to my favorite uh, place to do this which is my local station Great Brissenden train station where they've got these nicely marked parking spaces so it gives me a bit of an indication as to what the turning circle was like all right so if we just pop her in the middle of this one easy to find neutral the side stands a bit uh, it's quite short and the actual stand kind of interferes with the peg when you get it down but no big deal just an observation all right then lugging about so no handles to grab hold of lifting her off the side stand though very it feels very light i have to say for a big old bike so let's come around here hard round on the handlebars and i can already tell this is quite a wide turning circle yes it feels nice and light though there we go but yeah quite a sort of jumbo jet size turning circle so it was the middle of that one into that one the turning circle so if that's important to you something to think about but no big deal as far as i'm concerned but yeah actually moving it around very very easy i don't know what the weight of the bike is but it feels light to me 
lot of cyclists out today, I don't know what's going on. These lights that cycles have are bloody amazing, aren't they? Excuse my French, it's nip by quick. Such a shame you're not allowed those on motorcycles. There's a light like that on the back of your helmet, I'm convinced, would help with conspicuity. Anyway, we digress, back to the CB1000R. Handling wise, around my local twisties, she feels lovely again. I'm being a little bit careful because I've got new tyres on here. But it does feel light, this bike. Again, I don't know what the actual weight is, nor do I care. All I know is it feels light when you're riding it and it's not difficult to move around, getting on and off the side stand, that sort of thing. Ah, ye oldie Amersham, looking beautiful as ever. Oh, brakes, they work very well indeed. Might be a brand new bike, but the uh, brakes feel sharp as you like, as you'd expect. Let's just have a little go here. Yeah, quite nice and progressive actually. They're not, uh, they're not snatchy or anything like that. Let me just try the rear. Uh, rear classic motorcycle rear. <laughs> Doesn't do a great deal. But again, maybe due to needing a little bit of bedding in given it's a brand new bike. But uh, yeah, brakes seem absolutely fine. Well, I've just noticed the indicators that are on all the time in sort of daylight running mode. Hondas seem to do that these days. I don't know if there's been a change of legislation or something because you didn't used to be allowed to do that. It used to be a US spec thing. But certainly on my Goldwing and on this bike, and I know on new CRFs as well, I noticed it that the indicators are on as daytime running lights, so that's a good thing. We haven't talked about the gearbox on the CB1000R yet, because one thing I do like about this is the quick shifter. Let's give that a go. Yeah, it's lovely. It works really well, as you saw there. In the lower gears, it seems like there's quite a delay when you actually uh, hit the shifter and the gear changes. So the, you know, the timing stops a little bit longer than you like. I don't know if you can change that. It may well be that you can change that setting if you want something a little bit more sporty. But the quick shifter itself works beautifully well, both up and down, even at you know, slow speeds and under not particular you know, loads. It's uh, one of those quick shifters you can sort of abuse, and it seems really nice. Clutch isn't too stiff either. Yeah, she goes really well. Nice note out of the engine, it being a four-cylinder, of course. I'm not going to thrash it, because it's new, but if you did thrash it, it would have a lovely whine and wail about it, I know. Suspension is lovely, actually, just in that Goldilocks zone. Not too firm, not too soft. The handling's nice through these bends, but it doesn't want to throw you out the seat. The thumbs up there. Let's go down my favourite bumpy, twisty section. Yeah, I've got a grin on my face. <laughs> it's a nice bike, this. I'm liking it. It's been kind of under the radar for me, the CB1000R. I've never particularly thought, oh, I must have a go on that, because it was just one of those sort of meh bikes, but I'm glad I've ridden it. In summary, there's nothing not to like about the bike. I've, I've been riding it, as I say, all day. I haven't felt, I haven't found anything about the bike that's obnoxious. It's easy to ride. It looks nice. It goes well. It sounds nice. What's not to like? thumbs up for the CB1000R. Let me know in the comments below what you make of it. If you're, a, if you're an owner, is there anything that you need to know about the bike? So there we are. That's my quick and dirty first ride review of the CB1000R from Honda. Thank you very much indeed to the guys at HGB for lending it to me, and thank you for watching the video. Till next time, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.